Hello to everybody, I'm Simone from Economia per i Cittadini. Today we are here in Brussels to interview David Cronin, journalist specialized in European politics. He has written for The Guardian, The Economist, The Wall Street Journal Europe, European Voice, The Irish Times, and on several blogs such as Electronic Intifada. He is uh, the author of uh, Europe's Alliance with Israel, Aiding the Occupation, this book, and also um, of a corporate Europe, a book on the influences of corporate lobbies on the European Union. So David, uh, thank you to be here. And um, the first question is, when is the idea of the book Corporate Europe born? Why? When have you decided to start your investigation on the lobbies action on European Union here in Brussels? And why did you become interested in this issue? Well, I wrote my book in Corporate Europe in the year 2012. And I guess the reason why I decided to write the book was largely in response to some of the issues that arose because of the economic crisis. Uh, I'm from Ireland and I've been observing obviously what, what has been happening with the Irish economy for some time and I came to the realisation that Ireland and Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal have been used as part of what I regard would what I would regard as a very cruel and brutal economic experiment for the past few years. What we are seeing is a very extremist, a very severe form of capitalism being imposed on, on these countries by the elites in Brussels. Frankfurt, where the European Central Bank is, and Washington, where the International Monetary Fund is headquartered. And so I set out really to um, examine who is really in charge of, of Europe, given that I'm based here in, in, in Brussels. And I guess I came to the conclusion that it's not Although obviously the, the, the political figures are powerful, the political figures in the European Commission, in the European governments and to a certain extent in the European Parliament, they don't run Europe alone. There's this kind of other centre of power here in Brussels and it's the representatives of big business. Whether we're, whether we're talking about the oil companies, whether we're talking about the banks, whether we're talking about the big food companies, whether we're talking about the tobacco industry or the alcohol industry, they, they all have a huge presence in Brussels. It's estimated that there are between 15 and 30,000 corporate lobbyists working here in, 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 in Brussels, and indeed that may well be a conservative estimate um, Brussels is, is number two in the world in terms of the concentration of corporate lob lobbyists. O only Washington has more corporate lobbyists than Brussels has. So I, what I really set, decided to do was to set out and examine who these people are, what mandate do they have, do they have any, man and man and it was any, any mandates to do what they do. Certainly, they certainly don't have any democratic mandate but, but I, I wanted to examine uh, who has decided to give them all this power uh, to influence European Union policy. Um, and I really, I suppose, I, I guess I just decided to investigate and, and to try and name and shame the, the individuals and the, 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 the organisations and, and the companies that really uh, this dictate policies and laws that affect every citizen in the European Union.